Raspberry Pis are very good for monitoring all sorts of things. Today we will use InfluxDB and Grafana for monitoring as well as enable smartphone and mail alarming. In the end we will harden the Raspberry that it automatically restarts tasks after they crashed. Great YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. In video number 209, we used an SDR receiver to listen to 433 MHz sensors. In video number 261 and 265, we started to build a beer pressure monitoring system using a Raspberry Pi and an SDR radio receiver. Like that, our Raspberry can be used with many other sensors and for many purposes. Today, we will install an SDR receiver, including RTL underscore 433 on a Raspberry Pi. Add an automatic restart capability for crashed processes. Install mail on our Raspberry. Enable to use the Telegram Messenger. Add an alarming function to Gravana and test everything. This would take many hours. This is why I created an SD image file for you. Just download it, burn it on an SD card and you are ready to go. You find a link on my homepage where you find the image file as well as all commands if you want to build it yourself. Let's start with the SDR receiver. If you do not know what an SDR receiver is, I suggest to watch video number 209. Our receiver looks like that. It costs around $10 and, if you have the right software, can receive all signals in the range of 24 to 1766 MHz. This includes FM radio, police, air traffic, mobile phones and amateur radio. Unfortunately, you are not allowed to listen to most of these services. Nevertheless, you can also use it to listen to the 315 or 433 MHz sensors, which is officially approved. First, the password list of the SD card. Maybe you want to change at least the password for your Raspberry. Let's start with RTL433. The command RTL underscore 433 R shows all 126 sensors this software can decode. I'm sure that this number will increase in the future. The sensors with an asterisk are disabled by default. Maybe you find your sensor. If not, I suggest to start RTL 433 again with a dash G option and wait till your sensor sends a message. Our TPMS sensors will not send anything unless we change the pressure. We do that with this pressure chamber. And now we see messages. The sensor is called Jan Sight and it has number 123. If we add dash 123, we do not get messages from other sensors. A test shows we get plenty of messages from our TPMS sensor. Very good. They show pressure and temperature. Now we have to get these values somehow to our Grafana dashboard. Fortunately, RTL433 can create JSON messages and send them to an MQTT broker. The command looks like that. We call RTL433 with the dash R option and at the MQTT server address, including credentials and the topic. Please replace the broker address, the topic and the credentials if you want. If we start the program, we see two things. First, no messages are displayed anymore, even if we increase the pressure. And second, our Raspberry is blocked. If we want to use it for something else, we have to stop our receiver with Control C which is not what we want. Better would be to run RTL433 in the background. This is what we will do next. We will use Supervisor D. During boot, it starts RTL433 in the background and if RTL433 crashes, restarts it. 
This is precisely what we need, because it seems that the RTL dongle from time to time crashes. Not nice, but now we know how to handle it. RTL 433 terminates if the dongle does not answer anymore, and then Supervisor D restarts it automatically. Now everything is stable. Supervisor D is already installed on the SD image. The only thing you have to do is to adapt the broker address, the credentials and the topic using this command. We replace this line with the line we tested before. Save it and type sudo supervisor control reread. Now we can go on to node red. The flow should already be there. It receives the JSON messages from our MQTT broker, creates a JavaScript object and extracts the sensor ID and type. Now we can filter all messages which are not of type TPMS and filter outliers. Do you remember? When we tested our sensor, we got quite many messages in a rapid sequence. Most of them were the same. We have to eliminate these redundant messages to avoid blowing up our database for nothing. This step might not be necessary for other sensors if they only send one message at a time. As a result, we get a message containing the pressure, the temperature, the type and the ID for the sensor. As the last step, this data is stored in InfluxDB into the database Beer. Of course, you can use a different database name. Then, you first have to create a new database in InfluxDB and also change the data source in Grafana to this database. This was covered in video number 255, so we can go on to Grafana. Here we find a dashboard called Beer Brewing. It contains three panels, one for pressure, one for temperature and one for the alerts. These panels are also pre-configured on your SD card. Like that, Reto, the hop nerd, can monitor his fermentation from his warm living room. I'm sure he will be happy. We still have one open point. He wanted to be alerted if something horribly goes wrong. And he wants his alarm on his smartphone. The simplest method is using mail. That is why we start with that method. We use the SNTP protocol and a Gmail account. I suggest not to use your main account for that. If you enabled two-way authentication, the process to use it with our raspberries is more complicated. I use Gmail because it's free of charge and can be used by everybody. I will delete this account after creating this video. So no worries about credentials, etc. We call it please more beer. And we have to go through the usual steps until we have the account created. Now we have to enable less secure apps because we will use the SMTP protocol. The work on Google is finished because SSMTP and mail utils are already installed on my SD card. We can go on and set up the connection to Gmail. For that, we have to update SSMTP.conf with this command. Here we have to add or adapt these lines and save it. Now we can check if mail works by sending a hello world message to a mail address. For ease, I use the same address from before. You should use the address you want to use for the alarm. And really, the mail appears after a few seconds. So mail works and we can continue with Telegram. Telegram is a messenger and an alternative to WhatsApp. Of course, it also runs on Hopnerd's smartphone and immediately will alarm him. I used Christian's instructions for the setup of Telegram. He suggests downloading Telegram on your PC. Cut and paste are more comfortable like that. I use Windows, but Telegram also is available on other platforms. Then we have to install a bot which receives our alarms. Also here, I will delete my bot after this video. We first search for the bot father and start a chat with him. To create a new bot, we enter the command dash new bot. After entering a name and a username, which has to end on bot, we get a link and a token. 
Both are important if you want to send messages from our Raspberry. Please copy them into your favorite editor. Now we send the first message to our bot. This step cannot be omitted. Otherwise, the bot is mad at you and will not help you for the next step. And please send text, not only clapping hands. Then we have to create and call a link, which includes the token from before. The API shows us the content of the last message. Now you see why it is better not to share the token. Please note down this ID. It is the ID from the account you are sending the message. Now we have everything we need. Done. We can go to add alarming functions to Grafana. We choose the beer pressure dashboard from before and should see our curves. We click the bell symbol and go to notification channels. And here we can add a new notification channel. We can select from many different services. We start with mail. We give the alarm a name and an email address of the responsible person. I also want to get the graphics of the pressure with my mail. Now save and test. If everything is OK, you should see this green box and also get a message in your inbox. This mail only includes test data, but it works. And we can go on to the Telegram channel. Again, we will add a new channel and choose Telegram this time. We insert the token and the chat ID from before. Unfortunately, we get an error message. Maybe 1234568.9 was not my real ID. If you enter the right one, you will immediately get a message on your PC and your smartphone if you installed the app. Cool! But when do we want to be alarmed? This is defined in the alert rules. We edit the pressure dashboard and add the alert. It should be checked every seconds and the alarm should be sent if the last value is above 2 bar. We also can define what to do if we have no data available or if the data is zero. We could decide to send an alert if no data was transferred, because we know that our sensors only deliver values if the pressure changes, we choose last and test the rule. It evaluates false because the pressure is below two bar. If we increase the pressure, the test evaluates true. If we add our two notifications and a message, we should get alarms on our smartphone and in our inbox. Let's do a final test. I start with below 2 bar and pump till the pressure is above 2 bar. The message arrives nearly immediately on my iPhone. So I'm ready to deliver the Raspberry to Reto, in the hidden hope that we will taste another of his fabulous beers. Summarized, we got an SD card with lots of useful stuff for our raspberries. It saves us a lot of time. We installed an SDR dongle including RTL433. Added an automatic restart capabilities for crashed processes. Installed mail on our raspberry. Enabled telegram. Added two alarming functions for Grafana. And tested everything. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.